Hello my dear friends and welcome to my channel. Don't forget to make yourself a cup of coffee or tea with snacks if you want, because today we have very interesting stories, and one of them is a story about a woman who demanded OP give her child a laser to play, and then threatened him. Please subscribe if you haven't and I hope you'll enjoy it. This incident was so stupid that I can't really help but share the story, since my friends keep telling me to. What I find most weird about this is that my car wasn't anything super special. It was just a yellow 09 V6 Chevy Camaro with black stripes. When I bought it, it was super cheap because the passenger side door had been smashed in somehow, and there was already 130.000 miles on the odometer. But the title was still good somehow. No idea why, nor do I really care. It was sold to me via proxy. All I know was the car looked like a good deal, so I bought it. A friend of mine who works in auto body fixed it for me. He said that most of the damage was to the door itself, and I just needed a new door after he made a few tweaks to make sure everything was straight. Together we managed to find a door at a salvage yard that was the same color. A little work and the car looked almost new. And it became my fun ride to commute to work or drive around when I didn't feel like using my other car. I didn't do any modifications to it. I'm not one of those guys that's into speed or crazy mods. I liked the car because it looked cool and the gas mileage wasn't so bad with the V6. In fact, I wanted a V6 Camaro because I heard that they're usually in better condition than ones with a V8 because people drive the V6 more for looks than power and don't gas it as much. I drove the Camaro for a year before running into a random Karen at a supermarket last year in September. Those places tend to draw Karens in regularly. Especially in the state I live in. I've seen many Karens, but was lucky to hardly ever be noticed by them. I was shopping for some stuff to make dinner and was about to head home when I found the Karen with her young son all over my car after exiting the store. I'm guessing the boy was around 4 years old. And his mother was taking pictures of the kid sitting on my hood while the kid kept smiling and gleefully saying Bumblebee. Yes, I understand the reference and I've heard it all before, I don't like people messing with my property and told the kid to get off. The Karen took one look at me and told me to mind my own business. Now I'm 29 male, but I have a bit of a baby face. And my casual clothing made me look like a teenager. So I guess to her, I couldn't be someone who'd have anything to do with such a nice car, that's actually a pretty common car. I told the Karen to get off my Camaro, and she bluntly told me there was no way it was my car, because I'm too young. I pulled out my keys and hit the alarm button on the remote. That made the alarm start blaring for a second, and her kid jumped off while screaming and crying, because I'd frightened him. But rather than pay attention to her crying child, the Karen came running at me full speed and managed to shove me hard enough that I fell over. The next part is a bit hazy. I got a bump on the head, and that crazy witch slurred every word she was screaming at me. She stepped on my arm and pulled the keys from my hand before I really had a chance to react. Though she didn't really hurt me much. She was not a big woman, only around 5'2 or so and a twig, while I'm 6'0 and over 170 pounds. When I got to my feet, she was comforting her crying kid and telling him that I was a mean person. I told her to return my keys, but she got hissy and said there was no way the Camaro was mine. I again stated it was and I would only give her one more chance to return my keys. She didn't. Instead, she handed them to her kid, who proceeded to start playing with the buttons on the remote and unlock the doors. I had enough and got my phone out to call the police. When the Karen saw I was on the phone, she started screaming and charging at me again. Though this time I easily dodged her and she nearly fell on the asphalt and screamed I'd assaulted her. I never even touched her and said as much out loud. The 911 operator was listening to everything that was going on, and I quickly told her where we were while this insane woman was still screaming at me. And two police cars had shown up before long. At this point, the Karen had locked herself in my car with her son and started the engine to run the AC. I explained everything to police, and they knocked on the window of my Camaro to get the Karen to open it and give them her side of the story. She claimed the car to be hers and that I was just some stupid, broke-butt teenager that tried to carjack her. Then bragged that she'd taken me down. The officer asked if that meant she'd shoved me over, to which she bluntly said yes. I told the police to look in my glove compartment. In there was my insurance card and a copy of my registration. And they could compare the name on my license. 
When the Karen heard that, she got out of the car and finally admitted it wasn't hers. But then said there was no way it could be mine. And that she just took the keys from me to find the real owner. That quickly earned her some shiny new bracelets and she was put screaming into the back of the police car. The parking lot had cameras, so it was easy to prove the assault. Though I only really got scratches, a bruise on my arm, where she'd stepped on it, and a small bump on the head. After the Karen was taken back to the station, they found she was high on medications. Which explains why she was so nuts. I of course pressed charges. Though my testimony wasn't really needed since the police had both CCTV from the parking lot and the audio from my phone call. It turned out to be the Karen's third offense and she got two years in prison. Oh and her kid was taken from her. The whole incident made me rethink owning the Camaro because it had been a magnet for people that bothered me a lot. So I sold it. Basically got back everything I had into it anyway. So I broke even. I doubt I'll want to own another sports car again. This is one of the craziest Karen stories I've ever heard, she actually got in your car. This is an 11 out of 10 Karen at its best. I'm glad she got put in her place. My grandma is an interesting individual. One may place her in the Karen category. She's from a small town where you are either very well off and waspy or you live in an old school made into an apartment building. She's on the waspy side. Knows everything and everyone. Always will find something about you to nitpick at. Fun times. The best times was 8th grade. She was a math teacher in my school for junior high. Oh boy was that a dandy time. Because I was her granddaughter, that but a he huge target on me. Every day she would watch me like a hawk and wait for the split second I would look away, then shout gd pay attention. Don't make me tell your mother you're goofing off in my class. And the whole class would giggle. She would grin, and her ego would inflate like swim shorts when you first walk into the water. One time I accidentally wore slippers to school, and for the rest of the year she would bring it up like can you not remember the equation like you couldn't remember your shoes. K malicious grins and laughter. But the straw that broke the camel's back was when I got a boyfriend. A bit of a backstory here, I was held back in kindergarten. So, I'm a year older than everyone in my 8th grade class. I was dating a boy in 10th grade. But he skipped ahead a grade, so he is actually a year younger than his 10th grade class. This made our age difference to be only about a year apart. However, from an outside perspective, when you first hear a 10th grade boy is dating an 8th grade girl, I'm sure your first reaction would be like you. And boy did my grandma eat that up like it was her very last meal. Anytime we would visit, she would make side comments like. We know GD prefers older men, right GD? Or if it was my child I certainly wouldn't approve, but I guess times are a little different. It was annoying, but it wasn't interfering with my life. That is, until she started to gossip about me to other teachers. She would tell them that I was sneaking around with an older boy. I was probably experimenting with things not meant for my age. That I was going into teachers' lounges and bathrooms with him. She also heavily implied my parents were against all of this. For context, my parents know how old we both were and actually aren't crazy. Also, my boyfriend was the quietest nerdiest kid in his grade. It took us both two weeks of holding hands before we even kissed. So none of this was true. But that didn't stop the rumors. During lunch I'd get asked by girls if it was true I'd done certain lovable things. If I was in class and I would ask a teacher to use the restroom, they would refuse. And if they did let me go, they would interrogate me for several minutes first to make sure I wasn't sneaking off to do it with my older boyfriend. Before any of this I was literally a fly on the wall, and I was completely fine with that. Now, I was miserable and felt completely helpless. After coming home crying for who knows how many days in a row, my mom got fed up. I remember her screaming that's it, grabbing her keys, and storming out the door. When she returned, she said that grandma wouldn't be bothering me anymore. Once I got older, she told me a brief summary of what happened. Basically, my mom arrived and approached her calmly explaining to her that I was her child and she has control of the situation. She even explained the age difference. After asking her politely to back off and stop telling lies to her co-workers, my teachers, grandma scoffed and said. You don't know what she could be doing behind closed doors. I'm just keeping an eye out for her. This set my mom off. She told me that she started yelling at my grandma about shaming her own granddaughter and how miserable I was. She said she has no right to say or do any of this, and what she was doing was cruel and inappropriate. 
My grandma's response, how dare you enter my home and accuse me of this. Get out of my house. So my mom left. The next day, my grandma avoided eye contact with me. She didn't even try to call on me for answers or point out what kind of clothes I was wearing. She just averted her gaze and did her job, finally. Rumors continued just for a little bit, but then people caught on that it really wasn't as scandalous as the rumors portrayed, and we were left alone. How did this all end? Like you would expect, grandma acts like it never happened. Never brings it up. Avoids the conversations if they are around the time when she taught me. It's irritating but at the same time, it's expected. Now that I'm an adult and we are all aware of her silly ways we can just smile and not until we go home where we then rant about how mean she was during dinner. I loved her ego would inflate like swim shorts when you first walk into the water. Screw grandma's math class, you were meant to be a writer. This happened about 4 years ago, I was 21 at the time. I worked in a tire factory and it was a pretty sweet deal. Check in, do your job, check out, no mess. We'd take short 20 minute breaks every 3 hours or so. One time, after going out for some fresh air, I was trying my then recently purchased arctic laser when I noticed there's a mother and son of about 8 years of age and somewhat 20 yards away. The kid runs at me and says, hey mom, look, it's laser. Can I try? Sure, go ahead, while getting closer. Um. No, not really. This is actually dangerous, it even has a childproof cyst. What? Aren't you a little old to be playing with lasers? Just give it to him and stop being selfish. My age isn't relevant to this discussion, I won't give anything to your kid. She goes crazy and interrupts. I don't care. Listen here you little crap, who do you think you are to say no to my boy? Ma'am, it's actually for his own safety. This is very dang. EM then tries to grab and take it from me. EK starts kicking. I then push him away, so he stops, but he immediately starts crying. See what you did? You just hit my kid. The security guy occasionally passes by, and EM throws a fit. Call the police now, I want to press charges, he molested my kid and stole his laser toy. I saw the whole thing from distance, this is not his toy. May I ask why are you here in the factory grounds anyway? My husband, manager's name, is the boss. I'm going to have both your butts fired by tomorrow. I'm also having you jailed for stealing my son's property and hitting us. She then rips one sleeve of her blouse and messes her hair and calls someone. Honey please, come help me, I'm so scared, one of your employees just stole from EK's name and assaulted us. Screams, pretending I'm doing something to her, let me go. I'm so scared, please, come quick. This whole time the security guard just looks astonished and when her husband comes, he explains. Hey sir, I was here the whole time and he did not hurt your son or wife in any way. Well, are you sure? Look at how she is. I'm positive. Still, if you want to confirm, we can look at cameras B2 and B7 as they surveil specifically this area. Okay. I'd like to see him. At the moment EM realized she was being filmed the whole time, she tried getting out of it, trying to defuse her husband's willingness to see the tapes. You know what honey, we better just leave it at that, can we just go home? I'm exhausted and don't want to extend this any longer. I urge you see the tapes, as the accusations your wife made are very serious. Manager. Yes, we should see the tapes. After seeing the tapes in private, the manager profusely apologized and decided to promote me one level up. He said he had an idea that it was a lie because she was a diagnosed sociopath and mythomaniac. After a week or so, he confessed to me that it was the last he could take from her and that he was divorcing her and requesting full custody of the child as she was unstable and unfit to raise a child. In the process of divorce that happened during the course of the next couple of months, the manager discovered she was cheating on him with her co-worker. Also, somehow figured out what my number was and called to apologize. She said she was trying to get back to her family and she regretted doing what she did. I told her to go screw herself. Poor manager, you could see he was a good guy that just happened to have bred the wrong crazy lady and was paying for this bad decision. You would think if she was smart enough to rip her clothes and mess her hair up like that, she would know about the cameras and stuff. But then crazy is crazy, right? Can't believe she tried to call and apologize to you. This happened yesterday when I was out shopping with my friends. 
Backstory, I have dry eyes, so I regularly have to put drops in my eyes, prescribed to me by the eye doctor. I have also changed names because of privacy. EP. Entitled Parent Me. Me, EK. Entitled Kid, Friend 1. Lucy, Friend 2. George, Someone Who Works There. Manager, I don't actually know what their job was there. We went out around 1pm and went to an outlet, we went into a pharmacy, and my alarm on my phone went off to alert me to put my eye drops in, so I took it out my bag spurted it in my eye, and put it back in my bag. Then I saw EP look up at me, but I dismissed it. Then me and my friends start looking around for nice masks, because we need to be stylish, you know. A few minutes later, EP comes over and says, I saw you put it in your bag. That's stealing. Then I reply, what? I haven't put anything in my bag, I forgot about me putting my eye drops in as it's such a common thing for me now I often forget about it. Yes you did, me and my son saw you. EK then nods. My friend Gorge then came over and he said, hey, what's going on? EP replies, she's stealing. George looks at me and then says to EP are you crazy? My friend would never steal. She won't even ask to go to the bathroom, she's way too shy. EP looked at him and raised her eyebrows, well you obviously don't know your friend very well, do you? She said loudly, which caught the attention of my friend Lucy, who came over and said are you guys okay? EK then shouts that girl is stealing, which catches the attention of the people behind the till who work there, and they come over. What seems to be the problem said the manager. I then speak up and say this lady says I'm stealing, manager then replies mind, if I look in your bag, I nod and hand over my shoulder bag for him to look in. After a few seconds he says well, there is nothing in your bag, and then he turned to EP and said I'm going to ask you to leave the store as you're disturbing other customers EP starts throwing a tantrum, even though she's a grown woman and it's not a permanent ban from the pharmacy. We ended up having to go home without buying masks as she wasted so much of our time that we had to go to a meal we had planned later that evening. I love that after verifying that no theft occurred, the manager kicked out the person who made the false accusations. There's the real hero. Well guys, that's it for today. If you end up enjoying this video please consider subscribing, and if you missed the last episode on the channel I'm gonna link it right here, the story is about a woman who thought op would babysit her kid with no pay, and then got what she deserved. Check this out if you haven't, and I'll see you in my next video.